I carried a camera with me everywhere I went. We weren't concerned about the internet. We did the things that teenagers did. We just happened to be in Hollywood. I watched the doc last night and I'm still processing it. And it's crazy to me because now everybody's recording their lives, but you were doing it. You know, you were doing it before it was kind of second nature for us to all like document our lives when we're out and about. From the time I was five years old, I carried a diary. And then at 12 years old, I was given an audio recorder. And then by the time I reached my teen years, I was, I was holding a video camera. And I really feel like something inside of me, inside of that little girl, kept a blueprint, a chronological blueprint as almost a roadmap for my adult self to come back home in a way, you know? I'm curious to know, I imagine you had a lot of moments, a lot of there but for the grace of God go I moments when you were putting this doc together and looking at the footage. Given what some happened to um, other people in the doc, your friends, many of whom, you know, tragically are no longer with us, or got much deeper into drugs or, or hard stuff. There must have been some junctures in your life where that could have been you. I think that there's a multitude of things. You know, I, I have an incredible family and, and so I, I had an amazing grounding where I always had my, my childhood and my youth um, and, uh, and sense of self, you know. Uh, at the same time, David Arquette says it so beautifully that the world can feel very painful. And I look at someone like my dear friend, Jonathan Brandis, who I love so much. And I was talking to his parents the other night and they loved him so much and they love him so much. And so sometimes even with all that love around us, there's just that pain. And I think one of the things that was so hard to process was the fact that the teen me didn't always see what was going on in the pain of the people around me. And I think that is the same that goes on today, which is like, and I say this, how often do we really look at each other and say, how are you, you know, and really mean it. Um, and so, so people are suffering all over the world and, and I think feeling incredibly isolated. And so I hope that this documentary allows people to not just look at the world through my eyes. I want them to be able to look at it through their own eyes and their own perspective. Yeah, it's it's really heavy at the end. It really drums the point home when not to spoil too much, but it you know, you have the dedication to people who are no longer yeah. with us and it's just like a fairly long list that keeps And these going. are and these are genuine real friendships, you know, Harold yeah. Hunter, Justin Pierce, Jonathan, all you know, these you know, Kim, I mean, these these are my families. And I think that's one reason I locked away the tapes for so long on a subconscious level, I wasn't ready to deal with the pain. I don't know the ending. I am absolutely discovering it as we go. There's so many experiences where I just was in such, you know, joy and love watching the footage. Some of the treasures found, you know, were messages um, when we were kids and you had, you know, your voicemails, Jonathan Brandis, he would leave, you know, a 15, 20 minute message because he was like determined to like use all the tape on the machine. And when I listened <laughs> to them all, the last minute is him confessing his true feelings, you know, and because he knew that I probably would never get to the last minute of the message. And so hearing there's the moment where he's like, I love her. I've always loved. And that was like, you know, you know, there's this long message. And then that's what he was sharing at the end. And it was like these blinders coming off. Cause I was like, if this is the example of how loved I was and I didn't see it, then there's so many other people in the world that probably don't see the ways in which they're loved. And I know watching the doc, what the most painful part of the doc was for me. Yeah. Uh, that hit me the hardest, but I, of course, you know, you're the one who lived it. So I want to know what it was for you. There's things that I had blocked out and things that I hadn't dealt with. You know, I had some memories and we, you know, I, as an example where, you know, I, none of these people that were in the film, but I had a group of friends that I thought were like my good friends. And then we'd hang out and I had kind of these things that I would like, when I look back and I was like, well, I kind of remember like drinking some ginger ale, but then not feeling the same after. And then like, I remember, you know, like maybe there was an altar, like, wait, was yeah. I on the door, front doorstep? And then I remember waking up in a room that wasn't my, so there was things that you know, that I 
had blocked out and not really, they're fuzzy. And so I'm still processing it because I still don't have full memories of what had happened. What was, what was mind blowing was then finding a tape where the teenager in me who still felt like these were my friends, I was going, what happened? You know, the journalist in me, I think was trying to make sense of it. And I was like, what happened? Because I don't remember pieces of it. And I know I didn't drink. And they're like, well, yes, you did. And I'm like, no, I didn't. The questions that that brought up certainly um, was incredibly, you know, painful. Yeah. And, and, and to be very clear, there was, there was multiple experience. This wasn't like one, you know, I had, there was a few experiences that were not, you know, so positive. Um, the biggest thing that came out of it um, was, was not, it was not about the who's and the what's, it was about forgiving the little girl who felt shame or felt like I had to bury it all away. I started developing rapidly. People were calling me Punky Boobster. The last couple weeks have been weird having guys pinch my ass. It's interesting because very early in the documentary, you talk about your 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 breasts. Sorry, I know you. It's weird. To I, talk. I have no problem talking yeah. about breasts. <laughs> awesome. What do you think it is that people, the media, that is, um, it's disgusting that they would care about whether um, you know a sixteen-year-old's boobs, what size they are, right. making like jokes about a Punky Boobster, as you said in the film. Well, how did you feel about the objectification? I, I definitely went through it as a teen and that feeling of, you know, grown men looking at me in a different way and um, and also just the, the insecurity that I started to feel. And so really for me, I felt like this was really important for my own sense of self. I really felt like I was going to make this transition and that I was so righteous in a way. So you're referring to being very open about the fact that at an unusually young age, you had breast reduction surgery. And you know, I have to say also having teen girls today, you know, my, my 12 year old's about to turn 13 and having a 15 year old, you know, for, for me, sharing the documentary with them was really a way of us having this open dialogue and conversation and to have experienced what I, what I went through developing yeah. as a teenager. And now to magnify that with social media and what is going on and the way in which people belittle each other and, um, and, uh, and, and make teenagers going through puberty feel uh, so uh, badly about themselves is, is really uh, horrifying, you know? How many times have you watched this film? Because just in the time we've, we've spoken, I've seen you tear up, you know, more than once. Obviously, this stuff hits close to home for you in good and bad ways, but like mostly good. I have been in the edit bay for the last, I mean, years, you know, frame by frame. So it, it's been a process. I mean, this has been years. Of course, it's been my whole lifetime, but it's been years um, in the making. And I'm so grateful because, you know, it has been this rediscovery of of self and, and who I once was and who I really am. You're going to get an Oscar for it. Oh, you're the sweetest person ever. Oh my God. I think you'll at least get a nomination. I think it's going to be really critically acclaimed. Thank you for making the documentary. Thank it's, you it's really so good. much. I really appreciate it so much.